Playing sport at any level really teaches us important lessons which can be transferred to any area of life. In my experience, these lessons from sport have also been transferable to all areas of my own life. Considering my time when I was at university, my career, my job, when I've been volunteering, when I've been socialising and interacting with people, how I've seen my relationships, how I've developed my friendships. These lessons that we have from playing sport at um, any level or physical activity or exercise or competing has valuable life lessons. And even though it didn't happen, the treasure of skills that I learned from the process and journey of wanting to become a professional footballer. It has taught me so many valuable skills, how I can view myself, how I see myself, how I overcome challenges and resistance. Sporting lessons are learned from the end goals. It isn't about when the athlete crosses the finish line or when that athlete makes a huge massive financial gain or when they win the race so they are standing on the podium with a gold medal around their neck. This is everything in the process before the final destination where all these key life lessons are learned and the lessons learned from sport. It's simply the process where everything goes behind the curtains with no encore when you're in the empty gym hall with just you and the basketball court and all you can hear is the last bounces of the basketball or when it's a penalty shootout but it's just you and the goal and you're shooting at an empty goal no goalkeeper and it's simply these moments in sport in physical activity in exercise in competition this is where all these key lessons are learned and i'm sure if you participate in sport at any level whether that's from an activity, social interactive, low level, high elite level, whatever level it is, you will have, have developed these lessons. You would have developed these skill sets, which are highly transferable to all your areas of your own life. Trust me, if you understand the lessons that you have learned from sport and you're able to apply these lessons into your own life, this will only just lead to an exponential level of growth. I'm going to provide you with five key lessons that sport teaches you, which can be transferred into our own lives and applicable to any stage of your own life. When I was the age of about 16, 17, 18 years old, and you're getting more towards the later teenage years, you're maybe potentially considering your path in life, whether that's in work, full-time job, university, people tend to kind of see people who participate in sport as kind of this dumb person. They kind of don't have this intellectual and clever mentality. And usually this judgment and this interpretation is usually constructed by probably more intellectual people, people who have a high level of IQ. They would almost shame these people who were good at sport or who focused and dedicated their life towards sport. They'd almost see them as kind of dumb, really. They wouldn't see them as like, oh, they have no brains, they're not clever. However, it's those people who are very intellectually clever who maybe didn't compete in competitive sport at any stage during their ages, or they hated attending PE classes, or they didn't really participate in any physical activity. It's these sort of people that are actually missing out on probably the most valuable life lessons that sport can actually teach you and give you within your life. Not only this, is they're just missing out on an expansional level of skill set, which they can transfer into their own department, their own areas, which is also going to develop your mind. This is because participating in sport at any level, whether that's an elite level or lower level or any physical activity, it challenges your own being. It challenges you as a person. It pushes you out of your comfort zone. It, it challenges your physical limits, pushes your mind to extreme limits. It's able to test that level of resilience of how you deal with uncomfortable situations, how you bounce, bounce back from injury. It's these sort of lessons that are learned from sport, which are so key towards our own lives. And don't get me wrong, sport does develop a variety of skills. And this includes like leadership, communication, teamwork, building rapport. Don't get me wrong, these are fantastic skills and that is just an additional benefit that sporting activity can give you. But 
It's the key life lessons behind the scenes in the process and the journey of competing in sporting activity or participating in it, which is really transferable to your own life. I'll give you an example. So when I was playing football between the age of like 12 to 16, and my dad used to take me to these football matches, and if we won or lost a football match, I'd probably have a little bit of a moan of complaint. I was the sort of kid at that time who was kind of blaming, oh, my teammates didn't do this if we lost, or I, you know, the other team were lucky to have scored that goal. Kind of blaming external things that I could have no control over. And my dad, as he was, was quite stoic. He was kind of saying, you need to kind of look at within yourself of what you could have done better as a football player. And I remember him teaching me these lessons of, he'd basically be driving back home and there'd be a roundabout. And basically you'd have to look at different directions where different cars are coming from when you're approaching this roundabout. And he'd tell me at a young age and he said, football is like driving. It's literally like being at a roundabout. You have to always be scanning around, always looking around you making quick decisions making. You can't just sit there and wait forever that roundabout. At some point, you're gonna to have to make that decision to go. And this was so true, even though my younger self probably didn't understand this fully at that age. But when I look back and reflect on it, any sport really, it teaches you decision making. It teaches you these valuable skill sets, being able to make decisions quickly. And if you take that example of decision making, that's transferred into all areas of life. You make decisions of what relationships you want to be in. You make decisions of what career choice you want to go into, what job you want to take on. You make decisions about what is your actual purpose in life, the friends that you choose to be around. We are always making decisions, but that has come from that idea of transferring from sporting activity and just applying that into different areas of my own life from these lessons. Make sure to choose them, make sure to use them, and make sure to apply them. Let's get into these five key life lessons. Advice number one, never give up. Never giving up is probably one of the most key life lessons that sport can teach us and give us, and probably is the most important thing towards our life. Never giving up relates to this ability in our minds to always keep going, always keep running, always keep walking, keep going. No matter how much the tough gets going, just keep going. This is really the key towards successful people. They have that mindset to keep going. Whether that's athletes, entrepreneurs, businessmen, businesswomen, politicians, whoever you want to see as successful, deemed successful in your own mind, they never give up. They're constantly persevering through these challenges, these obstacles, these hurdles that they have to overcome. Most importantly, they continue to persevere even when they don't feel like it. Do you see the important part of that is the feel? Now, if you look at all successful people, they're not always going to feel like wanting to do the work. They understand their emotions. They understand they've got to push through them sometimes. But it's that sense of doing the job, getting the task done, even when they don't feel like it. This is so common in competitive sport. You show yourself that you want to be there, that you want to have this attitude to be able to learn and grow rather than be naturally gifted. Because if you're naturally gifted, you won't learn these lessons of never giving up. You almost think that every other area of life that you go into, you're just gonna be a natural. But it's actually that attitude, that hard work and determination, that's the real truth of never giving up. Trust me, this does not suck. You may have to work twice as hard compared to the other person who may be more naturally gifted. But at the end of the day, ask yourself the question, who's gonna come out better in life? Who's going to learn more life lessons? Who The person who works harder, person who have, person has to realise they have to put more work in, or the person who's just naturally gifted at that supposed task or project or sport. If you want someone who is probably the most inspirational person when it comes to never giving up and shows that true grit in life, that's David Goggins. Now, if you read his book, probably one of the most best books I've ever read, but also the most inspirational book I've ever read. He went through against all odds. He was defied. He was basically doubted. He, was, he went against everything, against all resistance against him. Now look at his mindset. He wouldn't be who he was if he chose the path of giving up. If he chose, do you know what, actually, I'm just had enough. I'm not going to get where I want to be. It is what it is. That's life. He fought against all odds. He persevered. That's the difference between someone who's exponentially great at something and someone who's just 
damn average at that given task or that given ability. But imagine in your own life, you may have been doubted. You may have been told by people, whoever that is, whether that's close relatives, people you love. It could even be teachers, whoever it is, being told that you are not great, that you're not good enough, that you, you're rubbish, that you're never going to amount to success being defied against all these odds. But imagine if you just continue persevering all those years down towards your vision of who you want to be and where you want to become. Imagine that long-term, five, 10 years down the line. An example I give, can give this in sport is when I play five-side football on Wednesday and Sunday, and sometimes it might be we're, we're playing a match and someone has their head down or their body language, I can tell they're just giving up on themselves. They've made a bad pass, a bad shot. They missed a clear goal scoring opportunity. And they almost just kind of give up or they're just on the floor moping around it. Rather than saying, right, I need to get back into the game. I need to just learn again. The main takeaway of this is that never giving up is not a skill. It's literally a mindset approach. It's how you view your situations and how you approach that towards all your areas of life. If you look at it like this, if you're a certain person who just gives up easily, then you're going to give up in all areas of your life. But this important sporting lesson of never giving up, it then can be applied to all our other areas of life. Imagine your relationships. Imagine your friendships. Imagine your social interactions, your job. Imagine giving those up. Where would that leave you? never give up. It's an attitude that anyone can develop. So do not give up on you, do not give up on yourself, and do not give up on your vision. Keep going. Advice number two, work in silence. Working in silence is the side of competitive sport that people simply do not see. This is the gymnast who's walking along the beam, who can hear the sounds of their footsteps in the hall, this is the boxer in the boxing ring with no crowd or anyone around, but just has to shadow box. This is the bodybuilder who is spending hours on end in the gym, crafting the physique that they want to achieve to win that competition. This is where highly successful people are created. They are simply created in the training ground. There's simply a reason, if you look at more the elite level, where people cannot just accessibly enter professional environments, professional football club grounds, or professional sporting grounds, or professional clubs, is because people are a means of distraction. If these athletes, they want to train, they want to perform, they want to perform these excellent backhand shots, they want to analyze their opponents, they want to prepare for the upcoming match or competition or opponent they're going to fight, they have to do this without any distractions. And distractions, are basically the fishing nets to fish out for attention because attention in sport is the prize. And the reality is when people lose matches, when you lose competition or events, maybe you came second place, maybe you came last. These are where all the key lessons are learned. They're learned in silence when nobody's around, nobody's there to comfort you or support you. It's just you and your thoughts, your mind, without the silence and athletes or any sporting person embracing that silence. They will never be able to train. They'll never be able to grow. They'll never be able to compete because it's these moments in suffering that they need to go through in order where their biggest lessons are learned. Let's consider an online business, for example, to, to consider your online business and to start it and grow it over a period of time. You need to be able to operate in that silence, being able to operate without anyone distracting you. There'll be times when you're sat at your desk and you'll be tempted into these short-term gratification activities, but realizing what's the ROI in the long term on your own life. You'll need to sit at that desk and you'll have to do the tasks even though you don't want to do them. It could be you're focusing on working on that project or that university assignment, or that dissertation, or that research, or that PhD you need to complete and get in. So you'll be able to complete this. You're going to have to have limited or no distractions at all to be able to focus on the task that you need to get done. If sport teaches you anything, it's learning to embrace silence. It's being able to focus towards the next step, 
the next event, the next opponent, the next match, the next training session. It's always been able to embrace these situations rather than allow it to work against you. This is the true test of where successfully people are created. So make sure in your own life, you embrace silence. Advice number three, consistency is key. This is really the reason that about 70, 90% of people fail to really get to the top heights of where they want to be in their own life. It's simply because they are just not consistent in their own ability. This is the people in the race who, after the f falling at the first or second or third hurdle, they just walk off the training ground. They'll walk off the, the track. It's the people who continue to run the race who are the real winners. Anyone who wants to get better at sport or anyone who wants to be in a better team, if you want to be a better produce of individuals, if you want to be better at your given skill or ability within your sport, you have to always be consistent. The thing about this is it's understanding, it's not about achieving perfection. People, whether that's at an amateur level or an elite level, you'll understand that perfection is just not achievable at all. If you strive for perfection, you'll never make mistakes and you're more likely to give up. But it's understanding that being able to turn up and be consistent is the most important part of being able to play sport. No matter what level of activity or sporting event or competition it is, it's being able to understand that perfection is never achievable. There's no such thing as perfection. Even athletes at the highest level understand that they're never going to be always 100% at every game, at every training session, that they are going to feel 70, 60, 50%. But it's also understanding that them turning up and being able to show that attitude of keeping going, persevering through this, is one of the most important parts. And this contributes towards consistency. The reality is, is that when anyone starts anything, it takes a process. It takes a process of growing and developing and getting things wrong. And that's where consistency comes in. They were probably crap the first time they started it. But that's where sport is great, because this idea of training and training to become better. This is an important lesson that we're always growing, we're always developing. It's not about perfection of each training session. It's about developing through the process. Look at where all the growth happens. It's that consistency in turning up in training. It's the time where they're doing cardio-based exercises on the training ground to boost their cardiovascular endurance for that sporting event. Or it could be where they're with their coach analysing their own performance, when the boxer is sitting down and watching and analysing the, the footsteps of his opponent. This consistency applies to all areas of our life. We have to learn to be consistent with our social interactions, be consistent with our jobs and careers and actually turn up to work. It also means being consistent in areas like the gym and health and fitness to make sure we look after ourselves and live a longer, better quality of life. For example, from a survival viewpoint, you have to turn up to your job and your career because you're relying on that financial gain to be able to pay for your food, pay for your bills, pay for your children, pay for whoever it is. If you don't turn up consistently, that's going to affect you and your finances and all areas of your life, which is going to create more stress on yourself. When you're a baby and you're learning to walk, you're consistently aiming and getting up again and again to walk, even though you're falling down probably so many times, but you're going to promise yourself as a baby that you're going to just keep walking and walking and walking until you grasp it. Could you imagine if the baby just went, ah, oh, I can't walk, ah, oh, well, that's life, that's just how it is. They have to be consistently trying, even if they're failing. This can even be taken into an example of driving and being able to pass a driving test. When someone starts driving, they're rubbish at it, right? When you've done your first lesson, you probably were awful. Maybe you're okay, but no one ever does one lesson and then passes their test magically. Driving is consistency. It's about continuing over and over again to learn and learn and learn through, through lessons, to continue driving. And the more practice you get, the better you're gonna get at driving. It's that consistency of doing it, which gets you where you want to be. And to be able to pass your test and drive. Consistency is a process. Every day you're always learning. You're learning something new. Every training session, you're growing. And this is actually a key valuable lesson that sport teaches us which can be implied into our own lives today. Just see it as compound interest. You're always getting that 1% better every single day.
and there's 365 days in a year. So put 1% each day, that's 365% better each year. Compound that over a period of time of five to 10 years and you tell me where you'll be. Advice number four, failure is learning. This is probably one of the most fundamental and probably most life-changing lessons that sport can teach us into every area and walk of life. I'm sure you've experienced whether you've participated in a sporting activity, physical activity, could be exercise like the gym, whatever it is and whatever level, you probably will have experienced failure at some point and you probably would have failed miserably. But understand this, that is completely okay and that's great. This is the difference between people who actually embrace failure, who take failure as a means of learning, take failure as a means of growth. They're not embarrassed about failure. This is a growth mindset individual. And this is compared to the fixed mindset individual who just gives up easily every time they fail at something. They don't wanna, they feel they're useless at that given task or activity. They're not born to be successful or in that given path. So they just give up, they leave, they walk off. There's the famous saying that if you have never made a mistake, that you've never learned anything new. And that is the beauty about failure. Failure isn't about striving for perfection. It's being able to constantly make mistakes so you realise not to make those mistakes again or learn from those mistakes. What sport teaches us is that failure is huge, especially in every sporting activity, every sporting competition. Failure is massive. You're always, you're gonna lose matches. You're gonna lose individuals. You're gonna lose competitions. You're gonna get punched in the face. You're gonna make mistakes constantly. You're gonna make the wrong passes. You're gonna make the wrong shot. You will make these wrong choices. You will have setbacks, but this is all part of the process. But it's simply how you choose to see these setbacks, these circumstances when you have failed. And this is what makes the difference between what makes you great at something and what makes you exceptional at something. Every single athlete and every person in competitive sport would have failed numerous times during their career. And they would have told you that it was those lessons from failure is where they started to actually learn and grow and where they became significantly better. It's what makes them exceptional at a specific skill. This is a quote from Michael Jordan and it's probably one of my most favorite quotes. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed, by the man himself, Michael Jordan. Anything in life always requires the process of failing. No one is ever magically good at something. When they start off, they're probably rubbish at that activity or that given task that they need to do, but that is okay. For example, look at doctors. Do you think they've always succeeded in their diagnosis of patients? Do you think police officers have always made the right judgments when they've attended 999 calls? Do you think athletes have never lost races or competitions? Do you think that scientists, when they're gonna set out their given hypotheses, that the hypothesis always goes to plan and it always is tested and proven? It's simply how you frame failure. That is one of the most important things and the importance of what sport can teach us. Because if we frame failure as bad, as a negative thing, that once we fail at something, we're just gonna be rubbish at it forever. Once we fail at something, there's no point in trying. Developing this kind of fixed mindset, we're never ever going to grow or get anywhere where we want to be in life. If you have this mindset, you're almost setting yourself up to fail. It's like, for example, when you go to school and you take a test and you get rubbish grades. You can either take those rubbish grades as, okay, it means I'm rubbish at maths, physics, chemistry, whatever subject it is. Or you can take that and think, okay, I made mistakes, I got answers wrong. So I'm going to work as hard and revise so I can get the grades that I need to get. It really just depends how you frame and see failure because the greatest life lessons taught are from your own failures. So embrace it, take it and learn from it. Advice number five, discipline over motivation. I'm sure if you've watched my previous videos, it probably would have stated on one of them that motivation is overrated because a motivation can come from an internal external source that drive you towards that specific goal. Motivation is important for sure, which keeps our energy levels rising towards that given goal that we want to get to. 
but there are more important key drivers towards getting us to that goal. And the most important component is discipline. Discipline is the reason we take action. And it is that action that we take, which then creates motivation. It is simply the discipline in sport that makes the difference between an average person and someone who's exceptionally great at that sport, who makes them almost that rare statistic. It's the discipline. Discipline isn't just about the end goal being about winning and results. Discipline is the turning up, turning up to training on time, making sure you're eating your meals correctly, making sure that you're doing the gym training required to do per week, making sure that you are doing your cardiovascular exercise. And this, can, this is important because this transfers over to our, all our areas of life. Let's take this from a sporting perspective. If you take an athlete, let's just say they've been injured and they're out for a long period of time, maybe a year, they have a long setback and they need to recover. They need to have that discipline to be able to deal with that recovery process, being out of the game for a while. They can't just walk off and be like, actually, you know what? It is what it is. I've broken my ACL. Time to call it quits. Let's just retire and give up. They have to be disciplined in their recovery. Whilst they were disciplined on the pitch and playing, they need to be disciplined now and transferring this to a different environment. Disciplined in doing their rehabilitation exercises, seeking the coaching support that they need doing the hours on end in the swimming pool where they're just practicing with low bearing intensities. The reality is they understand it's shit. They understand it's frustrating their situation. But again, it's the discipline. They know they have to do it without even being asked or told to. They don't give it a second thought. They just simply do it. And through this action of recovering and focusing on their rehabilitation, this is what creates motivation. I'll give you an example of where motivation can destroy discipline and how if we reverse it and actually focus on the discipline this then will create the motivation a common example is when people want to lose body fat and they want to basically shred or get leaner for the summer months they're going on this big holiday with their friends or whoever it is and they have this goal this physique they want to achieve so it gets to january it's the new year and they've got about six months or half the year to get into shape if we look at the motivator, there's two things. It's first of all the holiday, and it's second of all the physique that they want to attain. What they'll do is they'll buy the most closest and most marketed PT that they can find in their local gym or area. And what this PT will do is it will give them a set of exercises and basically be the motivator. Come on, keep pushing yourself, let's go. 10 more reps, 10 more reps, five more reps, six more reps. And the problem is it gets to July but they still look the same. They've had six months, six months to get leaner, to get into shape. And they've probably only lost one or two kilograms. So what they'll do is they'll blame fitness, they'll blame their genetics, they'll blame their PT, they'll probably blame their holiday and then they'll just cancel it. But what if we reverse this process? What if we said, right, keep the external source being your holiday, that's fine. Keep that as a motivator because it's good to have that. But let's focus on discipline. You can get a PT, but let's focus on what days you're actually going to attend the gym. What works within your schedule? What's most likely to work for you and that you're going to actually attend the gym two to three times a week? And if you compound this over six months, you're going to see those results. It also does consider the behind the scenes, like the calorie deficit, the levels of stress and minimizing that, and as well as getting good deep sleep quality. But the most important lesson is being able to stick to it. And once you're able to stick to it, that is discipline. Anyone in life has to be disciplined because if we are not disciplined, we're going to make poor and bad choices. We're going to be broke. We're going to be living on the streets. We're going to raise our kids poorly. We're going to increase the chances of death. The reality is discipline is key. It's why we are here. It's why we are living. It's why we have structure and order to our lives. Discipline is key. So stick to it and focus on it over motivation. There's so many key lessons that sport teaches us. And if you apply and use these five key lessons to your own life or any area of your own life, you will see growth and results for yourself. But just focus on the process. It's not about the end outcome and the end goal. Take these lessons and learn from them. If you're doing any sport, it has key principles. And you're going to learn a variety of skills and valuable skills, which is going to serve you for life. 
Take care.